2015 and the early part of 2016 has been an extremely busy period for us here at Rossumstead. I think the primary achievement has been that we have redefined our purpose, our longer term vision and mission as an institute that prides itself in doing high quality, excellent science of an integrated agricultural purpose. In 2015 was the International Year of Soil, Steve. Why was this important and what have we learned new in our science? Well, I think really the important thing was raising awareness of soils. We're now using modern tools, obviously molecular biology, to understand what's going on in the soil. So I'm talking here about uh, soil biology particularly. There are major advances in that. And also in our understanding about the structure and really the whole sustainability of the soil system, including mm. the crops, including, if you like, the atmosphere and the water and the air and all the rest of it. We take a systems approach to these things. We have uh, soil scientists at Rossumstead working on arable systems, or the grassland livestock systems, mm -hmm. you know, which are equally important from a soil health point of view. Well, the farm platform at Northwick, of course, is a fully instrumented uh, animal livestock system. Mm. And in 2015, we have completed the baseline data collection of the three systems for the three systems we have established there. And there's a new data uh, portal right. that makes it available. Yes, we're discussing with universities in this country and actually around the world, uh, different organizations working in Africa, South America, China. This is a global problem. Mm. Soil and how we manage it in this century is going to be critical, I think, for food supply and for security. I have no doubt about this. So Gia, what was happening in 2015? What was the highlight of the research? So we published um, our results from the GM wheat trial. What we found was that we didn't get the um, reduced number of aphids in the field that uh, we thought we might based on our lab results. So would you call it a negative result? No, not at all. I think it was a very successful mm. trial. The plants were producing the alarm pheromone continuously, whereas in the field the aphids produce it as a short burst release. Mm. So if we can get the plants to produce a more honest signal in terms of what the aphids perceive, then perhaps we could get that a step yeah. further. Well, and that's why I think it's so important to do these trials in the field as fast as possible as part of the research pipeline. If we only stay in the greenhouse or in the lab, we just don't know how these things work in the real world. This is Camelina a Thai by crop that we've been doing research on for many years. Jonathan Napier leads this research. What's new in 2015, Jonathan? So in 2015, we did our um, second GM field trial of our Camelina, which is we've engineered to accumulate omega-3 fish oils. For us going into the field, and this is coming from somebody who's always been a lab-based scientist, going into the field was a step change and it was also, it's also really exciting. Everything we've done from when we started it, you know, over a decade ago to now when we have it in the field, shows to me that this can work in the real world. And the impact is going to be twofold, I think. One, it could be a sustainable source for fish oil instead of emptying out the world's oceans. And the second, it could be a fantastic novel high-value crop for UK farmers someday. What you see behind us here uh, was built uh, at Rothamsted in 2015 together with Lemnat Tech and it's the world's first fully automated uh, scanalyzer system. And why did we build this? What did we do with this, Nicholas? Uh, what we do with this is try to monitoring crops during the full season. In this box you have a set of different sensors coming to a visible camera, two hyperspectral camera with different range and different step. You have also a fluorescence camera, you can take measurement of fluorescence during night or during day. You also have two 3D lasers to uh, reconstruct the canopy structure of plant. So this is a fantastic new system and it's just an investment that one has to make in, in science. So, uh, it, science is an expensive undertaking. Now that the sequencing of the genome has become so easy and cheap, we need to, to 
add on top to that the phenotype information, the appearance information. Uh, we hope to invest more at Rossumstedt in the coming years to further expand this technology and make it even larger, but also then add other components to it that allows us to look at nutrient efficiency, water use efficiency, uh, whatever else. We have established a, a new company, the Rossumstedt Center for Research and Enterprise, uh, which is a joint undertaking with the Laws Agricultural Trust and, and also BBSRC. Uh, Rocker is an important part of our campus development here at Rossumstedt. We want to make Rossumstedt not just an institute of the typical research kind, but actually a get to a go-to place where lots of things are happening. Katie manages the Rossumstedt uh, Conference Center. So how do you like it so far after joining in this role? It's such a different challenge to what I've had before um, in terms of the industry, um, but it's, um, it's such an exciting place to work. We have Plant Impact, we had their annual investor um, day. We also had Sainsbury's who were here for four days doing their brand and ethical conference. So that's just a good indication of what's coming on board. So people are, in my view, the most important asset of an organization. For us, it's going to be very important to further improve the management of all of our human resources. I think it'll be helpful for many of our staff to have a clear idea, this is where I am, this is how I contribute in my work to this organization, no matter whether I'm a scientist or an accountant or a field worker. This is what I can do to move from point A to point B. So 2016 and 17 is going to be very critical for us. We have to now secure the next round of strategic funding. Very important to me is the establishment of very strong relationships to the UK farming community and, and the associated farming industry. Because the UK does need a strong agriculture, a competitive agriculture. It will need it more than ever now. Yeah. And we believe that Rossumstedt can play a significant role in this, but we also need to make sure that the work we do is really meeting the needs of farmers in this country. And that's something that I want to personally pay a lot of attention to.